Yo, if your drum patterns are feeling basic or flat, I've got five easy tricks to make them sound more professional and exciting instantly. Let's get straight into it. I'm July from Kickback Couture, and this is trick number one, layering alternate snares in the first kick. So this is the pattern I have right now. You'll get the point. You'll hear it a bunch as we move throughout this drum loop. With this snare hit that I have, I want to layer it. So I'm going to find something in the Reason browser to layer it with to add some variation and excitement to the loop. Let's go to Reason Drum Supply. Let's layer this with a clap. I like this one. I'm going to drag this into a mimic and then I'll add those hits in the sequencer. Duplicate that across, join these clips, and then I can pull up my velocity here. And that instantly adds some more flavor to that snare pattern. And we can add a little bit of reverb here. So the snare layer is on this one. I'm gonna add the low density reverb. Whew. That's crazy. RV7, low density reverb there. Next, this is the same trick, but I'm gonna layer the kick. I found this Kong device called Broken Toys that has some cool effects in it. Crazy vocal sound, so I'm gonna take one of these and put one of these on top of that first kick. All right, so this is what that layer sounds like. Under that kick, if I turn it up a bit more, you can hear it, and then I'll blend it back in. Add a bit of reverb to that. I'll also cut out some low end. Trick number two is gonna be adding fills to the end of our drum pattern. So if I flip to the sequencer, you can see exactly how long my pattern is. It's about eight bars. So I want to add a fill to this end area here, and I'm just gonna do this with Reason stock percussion loops. So just in this last bar here. So I have a Rex file that I've got, and I'm gonna play it so you can hear it. And I think that'll be perfect. Put my loop markers around where I want this to be. Copy loop to track. And then I'm going to turn off this. All right, yeah, and it'll just be for that section there. Cool, we'll just turn the volume down a little bit. Nice. Let's move on to the next trick. Trick number three is using reverse reverb. So here in the middle of the loop, I'm going to add some reverse reverb leading into the snare before the fifth bar starts. That's my snare, and I have some reverb loaded up here already. I'm gonna create a dub track here, and that snare is located here, so I'll just draw a note in. And I have my reverb settings turned all the way up and it's dark. You can also pull this damp down if you want it to sound brighter like this. But I prefer mine a bit more dark so it'll sound like this. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and bounce this in place, right click, bounce in place, and then right click again. You can normalize this to make it louder and then reverse. All right, so our snare is hitting here. I need to pull this back. I just broke up this percussion loop that we had and uh, moved half of it to this part. So now we have this. Into the second half of our loop. Now let's move on to trick number four. And that's gonna be adding ghost notes or soft percussion elements. So we've already got this really cool uh, Rex loop that we've got to add a different like fill and turn around to the beat. Now what I wanna do is add some ghost notes with the drums we already have. So for example, I could take this kick here, and maybe before the downbeats, I can add ghost notes. And these ghost notes just have lower velocity, so they'll be quieter than the one that is directly after it. So if I zoom in a bit, 
Maybe I can add that here. That's a good place to put it. Maybe pull this down a bit. Put another one here. Pull that down. And I'm just doing this by ear. We'll listen to it at the end and make sure everything sounds good. Let's listen to what I did this first half. And if I like it, I can copy it over to the second half. Okay, I like it. I'm going to remove this last one. And I'm just going to duplicate this over we can also do this with some of the snare hits so and let's listen to that cool we'll turn it down maybe add one there pull down that velocity Layer one there, maybe. Turn that down. Sounds cool to me. Just adding some different stuff there. And if you wanted to, you could make this different on the second half. This last tip is actually a bonus. You could sidechain different elements to the kick. So since I'm using the Kong, I need to go ahead and route my kick out separately. I did that just by changing the output on the drum channel to three and four. All right, so now I have my kick coming out of this channel. And I would like to sidechain some stuff to that. So let's go ahead and sidechain the melody to the kick over here. Put it into this sidechain input. I wanna do the same thing for the hi-hats. So in order to split this signal into two, I'm going to add a utility. We're gonna to go to Reason Studios, Audio Merger and Splitter. And I'm going to take this parallel out and split it here and send it to our two different sidechain tools. Let's hear that all together. Sounds pretty dang good to me. That's how you instantly, or you know, within a few minutes, make your drum pattern sound more professional. Try out these tricks on your next beat and let me know which ones are your favorite. If there's anything I didn't mention, let the community know in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more sauce. Today is day 21 of our 30 day reason marathon. It's all culture, kickback, and cook up.